There is a descent of spirit into matter and a corresponding ascent by which matter is transformed by the indwelling spirit and the body is transfigured. These are two mystics who are describing to us the precise poetic language of the neurobiology of transcendence. Meaning this transfigured body, this material stuff, life, biology, neuro, nervous system. Now, for those of you that speak Sanskrit and are a little wiser on me, feel free to correct me after the talk when nobody's listening. <laughs> Narayan is a lot of different things. Narayan. The way it was taught to me by one of my spiritual teachers is that Narayan is a Sanskrit word that effectively means we experience the bliss of God through this very nervous system. In the Buddhist tradition, they said, we call it this precious birth. It is such a blessing to be alive. It is such a blessing to be sitting here. You have no idea. And yet you totally have an idea. But isn't it? We get caught up in the mundane and the routine and the ordinary and our little monkey mind chattering away. Okay. So we're going to talk about that too. But what, what I'm really describing here is that the greatest... The greatest antenna you have for your best life is this. You are a tuning fork. There'll be people out there with tuning forks. I can't do it. My voice is a little off. If you go to anybody who has a tuning fork, there was, ooh, you should probably not go to them. <laughs> it's this old, tired tuning fork. Wants to retire. <clears throat> Moved to North Miami. So you are this tuning fork, and in your congruence, congruence, everything is whole. And in your integrity, and in your alignment, on every level, mental, physical, emotional, <clears throat> structural, spiritual, because it's all one, creates this Tuning forth that's vibrating with the frequencies of this organizing intelligence. If you, can, if you follow that, just say yes. 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 That's right. Another way to say it is, when you're whole and you are so alive, there is a force living through you that is way bigger than anything that you can dream up. And the mental faculties that you've been conditioned by, that were set in place almost completely by the age of seven, don't have the lens to see it. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But this whole business of ego and how it relates to this process is really important. So anything you want to attract, anything that you want to manifest, it can't be a mental process. It has to be aligned in your physical body. You can watch The Secret 14,000 times and journal and talk. Or you can get connected and become congruent and your whole life Shall, the whole earth shall become a unified life. And when you get to that place, you're going to be less concerned about manifesting a Mercedes and more about manifesting what your soul needs to totally wake up and make the biggest impact on this world because that's where the bliss is. That's where the joy is and that's where the difference is. And if Mercedes comes with that, that is awesome. It doesn't matter. Toys are great. Just remember they're toys. So, the sacred temple is you. Here's a little neurobiology. These are fun facts. I said a few minutes ago, 60% of you is made of 14 billion old, year old stardust. I mean, do, do you comprehend this? You are made of stuff that's 14 billion years old. Act your age. <laughs> Seriously. If you knew that, how could you dump... dump hundreds of thousands, millions of tons of waste product into the Amazon. How could you lie? How could you cheat? When, when you start to realize you are the essence of life, the organizing principle, listen, as far as we know, and I love everybody here, and there's some freaky deaky stuff here. <laughs> this is Ship Charlotte, baby. Let it be freaky. And I'm sure there are some people who are so tapped into other realms that I could only dream of. But I'll tell you, as far as we know scientifically, 
minus the Roswell files that have been hidden away in some <laughs> drunk, jerk army's barracks. As far as we know, you're it. You're the leading edge. Look at what life created. Oh my God. Just, listen, it's so cool. I, I went over to one of my friends here, Ursula. She's German. She just happened to sit next to a German lady. I thought they were friends. Sparking Sie Deutsch. I said, how did you know this? Right? And then I go up there, and then there's these South Africans sitting together. You think those are small things, but nothing is small. Everything is connected. And the smallest things are the tiny filaments of God that have been guiding your life the whole time. <clears throat> and they're working through this experience, and your body is the very vessel through which you can experience it. Does that make sense? Is that good news? Because yes. Yes. you know what happens <clears throat> a lot of times in spirituality. We go to spirituality or we go to psychology or we go to see somebody like me because we want the pain to go away. Like all this stuff inside is, is sort of the, it's the block. But in fact, if this whole business is, is the organizing force of life, then everything that's inside of you and all of your experience is the exact medicine that you needed to wake up. And that this organizing principle, this life that comes in, has more than enough mojo to alchemize your greatest pain into the most unbelievable gift. Nelson Mandela. Hello, South African people. How many years was he in prison? 40? Okay, so I'm, you know, not a numbers guy. <laughs> It's a long time to be in prison. Shit, when I was driving here, I got stuck behind a train and I was getting antsy and pissed. <laughs> True story. <clears throat> and he waited and waited and waited. And his poem was Invictus. You are the captain of your soul. And he waited and he waited and he became a vessel for consciousness to live the leading edge. That's pretty cool to me. Martin Luther King. Rosa Parks, something woke up inside a Rosa Parks spirit and said, you know what? I'm not going to sit in the damn bus anymore. Or the back of the bus. I'm sit in the front. She did. Courage started a tipping point, which had been brewing because the consciousness of the planet at that time was also changing. A lot was happening that time. She made a big change. She lived at her edge. Life evolved. We followed. This is you. This is us. And all of our pain and all of our challenges are nothing but the greatest opportunity we've ever been given to be like a supernova. Because if you think it's all good in space with supernovas, there's a whole lot of shit going down. There's a lot of stuff colliding with each other and dying and killing. In fact, there's about, according to astrophysicists, more or less a one billionth of a chance that all the things came together to make you, you. And sitting here in this very body. One billionth of a chance. That's, that is spirit descending into matter. So that matter can show the face of spirit. So that we can have a unified life. <clears throat> Your kidneys pump through about 40 gallons of waste every day. Your heart lifts about a ton up a five-story building every day.